Can you tell if you're talking to a robot on the phone? If you thought you could before, you probably can't now. That's because Google is releasing a lifelike new feature for its personal assistant software, allowing you to make a reservation over the phone without having to place a call yourself. Here's Google CEO Sindar Pichai debuting Google Duplex at a company conference Tuesday. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hello, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Wow. Pichai said Google plans to launch Duplex sometime this summer. Joining me now is Tom Brandt, hardware analyst for PC Magazine. Let me ask you this. When you heard that, what was your initial thought? Because I had a thought when I heard the the mm-hmm, and I heard the um, and I was really startled by that. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds to me, I think, what Google wants it to sound, which is it doesn't sound like a robot. They have been trying to make it sound like a human, and it, I, it is creepy. It sounds like a human. Well, I mean, the fact that it has these sort of human-like things that we do, ticks that we haven't necessarily heard in other versions of this, how does that all work? Because that had to be intentionally programmed into this. Right. It's very different than, you know, if you call the bank or, or your cable company, you're going to get a bot responding to you. But this is different because they've actually um, had that plus artificial intelligence. They've used what's called a neural network to train the, the, the um, computer to actually be able to put in those verbal ticks like um, in addition to doing its task, which is scheduling an appointment. Because it's like the pacing, the inflection, yeah. everything sounded so real. Oh, some people are going to look at this and go, what kind of privacy concerns should people have with this product? So there's two main privacy concerns. One is not really new. I mean, we give Google tons of information, those of us who use Google's email, Google searches, things like that. Um, this is just one more Google service that the company can uh, you know, know things about you. They have pretty good, robust privacy policies, but they could change those at any time. Um, the other privacy concern is really you have to give some form of information about your personal activities to the Google Assistant so that it can schedule something for you. you it, it knows what you're going to be doing at a certain time. Um, and that's definitely something that I think they've thought a lot about, but there's always eventualities that they can't plan for. Well, can we expect a new set of security measures to prevent the misuse of this technology? Yeah, I think that um, there are tons of both in-house Google research, Google security people, and they're probably also looking at you know external security factors um, as well. But the overall, you you have to approach it with a, a form of caution. Like you, you should not uh, any new technology. You should be wary of exactly what the security means for you. Well, Google Duplex clearly is an advanced piece of artificial intelligence. Is this the start of a new technological era? So the one thing that w w could make it that way is if tons of people use it. The, the building blocks of artificial intelligence are getting a mass of data, a, ma a mass of things to train that AI on. So if, if they do what they say they're going to do, and if people actually want to use it to book really hard to get you know, restaurant reservations and things like that, it could be a new era, but it's only as smart as the people who are using it, and if no one uses it, it probably won't do anything. All right, Tom Brandt, hardware analyst for PC Magazine. Tom, thanks so much. Thank you.